What are some declassified government documents that are surprisingly terrifying? I grew up two miles from the Lua Lake Ontario Ordinance Works site, and my dad grew up on 89th Street in Niagara Falls in the 40s. He says that he remembers sitting on the train tracks as a kid watching the hooker chemical trucks bringing 55 gal drums to the Love Canal. That whole area was contaminated with all sorts of nasty stuff. So what did they do? They bulldozed it over and built houses on it, of course. Then in the 70s, when people were noticing toxic sludge in their basements, kids feet were being literally burned by the high levels of phosphorus in the ground, and people were getting sick they acted like they knew nothing. Eventually people sued, and the whole area was evacuated. They tried to clean it up, but they basically put tons of dirt and clay over the area as a cap, and it's all fenced off. You can see it when you drive east on the Niagara Falls Expressway to Towanda. For the Lewiston Storage Site, also known as the NFSS Niagara Falls Storage Site, I read documents where they had hazardous storage barrels sitting exposed to the element, with seepage and all that. Again. They've covered everything with clay to stop it, but it's already in the ground. The bad thing is that there's a large elementary and high school, Lewiston Porter, about two miles from the site, which is actually on property that used to be part of the site, but was never used and was sold to the county. Needless to say, the cancer rate among long-term staff and teachers is higher than average. I'm glad to have finally moved away. When they performed a lobotomy on Rosemary Kennedy, due to her being intellectually disabled. At 23 years of age her father arranged a prefrontal lobotomy at the time the procedure had only been done about a hundred time in US it failed leaving her unable to speak intelligibly and incapacitated. She was conscious during the operation they say that the neurosurgeons, or whatever they are called, ask the patient to count from 10 to no, when they should stop cutting down I've heard that they stopped when her speech was incoherent. Saddest thing is that she had to endure it for 64 years. All that because her family couldn't risk any political embarrassment. I noticed this is more disturbing than terrifying, but I think it fits. The person who redacted those Epstein docs did a shit job. I just read through almost all of them, and in one paragraph the miner's name or initials would be blacked out, but it would be visible in the next paragraph. That is some sloppy carelessness when you're redacting a document involving miners. Don't they, at the very least, have a way to digitally block these names, and then CTRLF back through it to make sure nothing is visible? I would imagine there is software for this specific purpose. I was thinking the same thing, then I realized this was 14 years ago, and they are not miners anymore. I don't think that should change anything but realizing 2005 was 14 years ago shocked the hell out of me. Operation Northwoods, a plan for a false flag operation, that came from the Joint Chiefs of Staff and Department of Defense in 1962, and given to JFK who turned it down. The plan called for the CIA to commit terrorist actions against US civilians across the United States and frame Cuba, allowing us the right to invade and depose Castro and the communist government there. It was declassified and can be found online at the JFK library. Terrifying that no one knows or seems to care that this was suggested by our government to the president. My high school English teacher mandated that I read this, I didn't understand it at the time, but he was responding to my question I posed him. As an airborne vet, why do you seem so jaded in regards to US history and politics? Still one of my favorite teachers to this day, he and I were able to go into all at other ost things the US has done. In East Germany a committed freedom fighter and her husband had dealt with having her home raided while she was away, being arrested on the way to protests and all sorts of state-sponsored harassment. After the wall fell she was able to read the documents the Stasi had kept on her and found out her own husband was an undercover agent and had written many reports on her activities with a bloodless banality. British Metropolitan Police Services have done exactly the same on ecological protesters from organizations like Greenpeace. There was literally a case a few years back, like 5 years ago, an undercover cop I believe married, and even had kids with a protester he was investigating the whole way through. Not sure if this has been mentioned or not, I'm not scrolling through a million replies. 
The site is run by a guy named John Greenwald, you slash Black Vault, started putting in FOIA requests when he was 15 and never stopped. Currently has what is arguably the largest privately owned collection of declassified information from the US government anywhere, and the entire archive is accessible for free. Not a direct answer to your question, but anything you want to know about stuff the US government was up to can be found buried in there, and he's taken the time to sort some of the more interesting stuff out to make browsing easier. Cheers. When the Space Shuttle Challenger was destroyed, it was reported that all seven astronauts were killed instantly. It was revealed decades later that some, if not all of the astronauts survived the initial explosion, as the cockpit cabin had enough protection to not be breached. For 2 minutes and 45 seconds, they were awake and aware as they plummeted toward the Atlantic Ocean. Understandably, NASA knew that the news of their terrifying death would have crippled the space program even more than it already was. We looked at this in flight school and pretty much, there's evidence to support that the crew was still running their procedures. Even after it was obvious shit hit the fan, they didn't die accepting their fate, they died astronauts. That's something to be admired amo. The plan after 9 over 11 to make figurines that look like Osama Bin Laden and give them to kids in South Asia. After it's left in the sun for a certain amount of time, its face would peel off to reveal a demon-like visage with red skin, green eyes, and black markings. Basically a demon. The objective was to scare kids and their parents, so Bin Laden and Al-Qaeda would lose support. You should watch the holy mountain. In it they talk about knowing they will have to go to war with a country in 15 years. They make comic books and toys with a villain that looks like that other race. They also make Ipipacac type medicine the same color as the skin of that race. All sorts of things to prepare kids to hate a particular race is by the time they are of military age and the war is fought. This isn't really a classified document, but at one point the US government was telling people to build your own bomb shelter to protect your family. And it showed how to dig a 8 foot by 4 foot by 10 foot hole in your backyard, and if there is a nuclear threat to get your family, and go in there, and cover it with a door. So obviously that wouldn't really protect anyone in the case of a nuclear attack. Later it came out, that the purpose of telling families, to do that was so, if there was a nuclear attack on American soil, they wouldn't have to bury as many bodies, because the families dug their own grave. So yeah, not classified but along the same disturbing stuff the US government did. I have a copy of this pamphlet, a lot of the design seemed really stupid, the door with two kiddie pools filled with sand in it one in particular, though in its defense, that one was supposed to be in your basement can't remember the source, but apparently there is a legit order signed by Hilter to his nuclear researchers saying, if they have a viable nuclear explosive start loading into V2s immediately. However, Germans didn't come that close to making a nuclear bomb. They didn't consider it a priority, because they calculated that it wouldn't be a decisive weapon to win the war, especially against US, who would already have nuclear bombs in their arsenal. Estimates put the probable year for a German nuke, if the efforts continued, around 1947. Jeffrey Dahmer's full confession, a couple of hundred pages of pure madness. Necrophilia, dismemberment, skinning, lobotomy, body part preservation, cannibalism. Dahmer became pretty close to his interrogating detectives, Dennis Murphy and Patrick Kennedy, and provided a lot of detail to them. A lot of it in a pretty candid, offhand manner. Damer should have been prosecuted for what he did in the army. Source. For capture it began the day he and Damer, an army medic, were put into a room together. The assaults began at once, and, eventually, he leapt from the third floor window to escape. I had probably been raped 8 to 10 times, I don't know. He was tying me to the bunk with motor pull rope. He took all my clothing from me. He would either beat me, before he raped me, or he would beat me after. I will never understand how the two main movies on Damer barely even touch the fact that he was a cannibal slash necrophiliac slash butcher. Same thing with the recent Ted Bundy movie with Efren. Like really? Dude went back to his body dump sites weeks later, dug up his victims, and had sex with their corpses and you're not going to mention that, 
Edit. I'm aware of the purpose of the Bundy movie. Nothing that anyone is saying is negating the fact that they could have alluded to what he did at the end of the film when it's revealed that he was in fact guilty. Instead, we end up thinking that he's just a serial killer slash rapists rather than getting the full picture that he was far more disturbed than that. He truly was a monster, as the title states, and a big part of what separates him from other serial killers is that element of his MO. One that is not US. There was an episode of Radio Lab that talks about an enormous secret facility in Britain that houses the British Empire's secret archives. The way they describe it, it sounds like the place where the Ark of the Covenant is stored at the end of Raiders of the Lost Ark. What they uncover in the episode is the human rights atrocities that were committed by British troops during the MAUMAU uprising in Kenya during the 1950s. There were details in the uncovered documents about detention camps and torture that occurred during the conflict. It gave grounds for surviving MAUMAU to seek compensation against the Crown in recent years. The atrocities of the conflict were not widely known about until recently. Not really terrifying but fucked up, Operation Paperclip. Where after WW to the US government took Nazi scientists and shipped them to America to do science. Some of them came straight from Nuremberg cells. The most noteworthy being Werner von Braun. Von Braun built the V2 rockets with Jewish slave labor. Every day they would execute the five slowest workers in front of the other workers to incentive them to work harder. Once he came to America, we shipped him to Huntsville, Alabama, where he built the Saturn V, the rocket used in the Apollo program, and got us to the moon. I always thought it was insane that Werner von Braun was born within a decade of the Wright brothers' first flight, then sent men to the moon on a rocket in his 50s. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe.